Okay, so we talked in our previous review of RTX about the fact that it's a terrible value, whether you compare the 2080 to a TI or the TI, obviously, to a 1080 Ti. We are going to go ahead and nonetheless do our review coverage as we normally do by moving on to overclocking. I mean, regardless of the value, people have bought these cards. All the RTX cards sold out. All the custom cards and AIB cards have sold out on pre-orders. So clearly there's people out there. But we're gonna see how much extra power we can squeeze out of these when it comes time to start moving them sliders. Build from NZXT lets buyers customize their gaming experience based on their desired FPS goals in today's most popular game titles. Choose a game you want to play, set a budget, and Build will recommend the best parts for your build. Want to get gaming faster? Then choose Blitz mode and order before 11 a.m. Pacific time and your order will be built, tested, and shipped same day. To learn more about NZXT's Build, follow the link in the description below. So we're gonna cover two cards here. Obviously the Founders Edition cards for the very purpose that if you guys paid attention to the keynote, they actually showed a slightly higher clock speed with the Founders Edition card than what the reference PCB is, which is kind of interesting because the Founders is a reference PCB. It's just apparently they're allowing it to kind of boost farther than the reference design, which is what the AIBs have to kind of follow. So we're gonna be doing the Founders card and then also the EVGA 2080 Ti. This is the XC Ultra. It is a reference PCB, but of course they're cooling, they're custom cooling options. We've got a different backplate on here, and we've got this almost three slot, it's a 2.75 slot with a massive heat sink on there. So this should hopefully handle any sort of thermal overhead issues. And I already talked about how the thermal design on the reference card, or I'm gonna call it reference, it's not reference technically. The founder's card um, was a little disappointing because of the fact that they kind of chose aesthetics over functionality in terms of airflow. And so I think that, um, comparing that same board to a custom cooler is gonna be something that's important. Now, when we do overclocking here, we're gonna use Precision X1. This is actually what NVIDIA sent with the review kit for media because Precision X1 was developed in conjunction with NVIDIA and EVGA. So this is, this is designed to work specifically with the reference card or the founder's card, whatever you wanna call it, as well as the EVGA card. So as you can see right here, we've got our GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Let's go ahead and get familiar with the sliders here real quick. This is your memory clock. Now this is the clock that it's currently running at. So these numbers that you see up top are real time figures. So you can actually see what these are in real time without having to go to the hardware monitor, which is the little heartbeat. If you're gonna change LEDs and LED colors and stuff, you do it here. Um, we're not changing any LEDs. We don't care about LEDs today, we care about overclocking. So this is where we can monitor our GPU temperature, our max temps, power limit. This is gonna be an important one today. A little spoiler as to what is gonna be coming. You can add more to it if you want by just left clicking that and you can turn on and off various things. Um, voltage limit, eh, maybe that's worth taking a look at, we'll see. So we added voltage limit there. So the first thing we wanna do now with all of our stuff, factory. So if you're not sure if you're factory, just click default. It will reset everything, fan curves, temperature target, power target, clock speed and memory speed. And we are going to go ahead and start with uh, the Heaven benchmark. Now this benchmark is a good place to start because one, it's free. So you need something to test. And two, uh, it allows us to just sort of start our baseline testing. Now to get true overclock stability numbers, you need to find a frequency that works in all of your titles. You might find yourself being 100% stable in one benchmark and then crash immediately in another benchmark or another game. So you, what you're gonna see us do today, you wanna do for every single one of your games in your titles. This is why benchmarking can take hours, days, or even weeks to find a stable number. So we're sitting at 74C, which um, is, there's the 75. We saw 75 as our max in our review through all of our testing. It's gonna sit right around 1725, 1740, which is still a, a small overclock. That's because we're getting, we're hitting power limits. See yeah, how we're sitting between 98 to 100. As soon as that sits a, hits 100, it drops because it's not allowed to go over 100. So we can make the clock go higher without touching even the clock slider by simply allowing more power to be drawn. If we move that all the way to the right, and we haven't hit apply yet, we're allowing it to pull 123%, or 23 additional percent, or 23% additional power is allowed to be pulled. So you can see by raising the power limit to 123, uh, which is kind of funny because that's actually farther than the reference spec calls for apparently. I think 112 is what the reference spec sheet calls for, but NVIDIA is shipping them at 123, so it's almost like NVIDIA is not playing fair with their own AIBs and competing with them, which kind of sucks. 
Um, why send a spec sheet and then ship these cards? Oh, that's right, factory overclocked, right? Anyway, that's, I digress, whatever. Stupid launch this time. Um, our, our clock speed is still at zero. So you can see our temps climbed because we're allowing it to pull more power and the fan curve still is kind of capping out at 59. This is the factory fan curve. So we need to change the fan curve. We need to change the voltage and all that stuff. Let's talk about the voltage real quick. This is the part a lot of people don't understand. So keep an eye on the number right here. See how it says 1000 millivolts or one volt 981 or 9.81 millivolts or 0.981 millivolts, whatever. If we move that all the way to the right, it says 100, but watch when I hit apply, it's not applying 100 millivolts. See how that stayed the same? That stayed the same because what that slider represents is a percentage of available headroom. So the voltage curve actually allows for extra voltage to be called for when needed. At factory, that's just saying zero, 0% 0 over volt allowance. So it's not allowing it to pull more voltage until you move that slider. So if we set it to 20, that would mean allow it to overvolt by 20% when needed. By setting it to 100%, you're allowing it to take all of the available extra voltage that it sees. So that curve doesn't usually change too much and sometimes moving that all the way to the right can mean a non-stable overclock or an unstable overclock because it's now seeing more voltage than it wants and that's where ASIC quality comes in. That's a whole nother video, I've talked about it in the past. Um, but in, the, in testing right now with RTX, it hasn't made much of a difference in my testing. Now if you look over here, you'll see we haven't even touched the core clock yet, but because we allowed more power limit, we see a higher temperature, which is expected because the fan curve hasn't changed. NVIDIA doesn't allow it to go past 61% fan speed. And our core voltage, or our core clock has not changed. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna crank the fans because when you're asking it to overclock, you better be concerned with uh, you know, temperatures over noise. And obviously with this being a, not the most optimized air cooler, um, we're seeing hotter temps than I would like. I'd love to see this much lower. But you notice how our core speed started to come up just ever so slightly because as this comes down, that's gonna go up, right? GPU boost, it's the, the algorithm of temperature versus power versus overhead. Now let's go ahead and overclock our GPU just plus 100. So that's an actual number we're applying. So we're adding 100 megahertz to that. But again, you're gonna see this fluctuate around, even though it was at 1845 and I said plus 100, it only gave us like 80 of it or maybe 75 of it because we're still hitting power limit. So you can see how the power draw on this card is significantly affecting our overclocking experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this plus 150. So if we're adding an extra 50, we should see that go to at least 1950. And we're getting the full 50, which is kind of nice. But again, it depends on the scene. So as the scene starts to ask for more, you know, calculations of the GPU, each scene on Heaven is testing a different thing. As this hits 123, that will drop back down. When this goes below that, that will come back up. So these are directly related to each other. And in fact, you can even see it here in the hardware monitor because we have power limit set right here. Look at all the time we spent at one. One means we're currently power limited. So there we are sitting at one right now. And these dips right here are usually scene changes where it, it goes in between. You can also see we have hit voltage limit a couple of times and that's because we moved that slider. So, our temp limit, we never hit temp limit because again, we never hit the number that's represented right here, which is 88. 88C is where we're allowing it to go max temperature. We're sitting at 68 now with a 150 overclock. So in all my testing, I think plus 200 is about as far as we'll be able to get here. This gets us just over 2000 megahertz, 2025, which is a pretty decent overclock. Temperatures are definitely within check or within, you know, they're within check. Yeah, that's the right term, I think, yeah. So now we know what the Founders card is capable of. Let's go ahead and throw a reference PCB with a custom cooler design on there and see uh, what kind of results we get. So the EVGA card is now installed pit stop style. There it is right there on our test bench with its pretty green lights. Of course, the RGB and stuff is controllable, but that's besides the point here. As you can see, our core clock is actually bouncing around quite a bit, but once again, we're still hitting that same power limit voltage. Look at the temperatures though, 65 C, and that's about as hot as it's going to get when everything is set to defaults. But let's see what happens here when I move the slider. So they've got a 130% available to this. We're, we're calling 30% extra power to be delivered to the core and uh, all the other components. Look how far that went by just moving that slider. So that's already farther than the, than the founder's card went. But of course the temperature is going to go up too. So now we wanna go ahead and come in here and crank these fans. 
So we're gonna go ahead and move this voltage slider up just like before, that way we can allow it to pull all the voltage it needs. So look at this, we're sitting in the 1900s, 1920 megahertz, over 4,000 CUDA cores. I, I keep saying over 4,000 because I can't remember the exact number. I, I, I'm a terrible reviewer, I know. But look at these temperatures though. Overclocked, sitting at 63, 64C. So let's go ahead and do a plus 100 on there and see what we get. Just shy of 2000. We can actually move our memory too. Um, let's go 750 on that. We're currently getting in 1440p 260 FPS in heaven. So this is definitely doing well with the overclocks and the temps continue to come down. One thing to keep in mind and why water-cooled cards will typically give you a little bit extra headroom with the same BIOS and stuff is because the fans are using voltage too. This is a TDP, our total, this is the total package. This is the entire card as a whole, not just the GPU. So when fans go to 100%, it uses a little bit of that as well because they're using more amps to turn the fan. It's a very minuscule amount, but it's still enough to affect our max headroom. If we are hitting power limit, everything pulling power on this card is now affecting the total uh, core clock that we're able to get. So let's try pulling down the voltage limit and see what happens. Um, I'm gonna go all the way back to zero. Let's see if we crash. We didn't crash. Power limit and core speed is still bouncing around just the same. So there's your definite proof that we're hitting power limit. Watch what happens when I change the core clock. This will spike and come right back again because of that. And if we look at our, see there's our, we're just still sitting at power limit. So power is what's limiting our max clock, not the core speed. So you hit 2100 for just a second, and then the voltage drops, the core clock starts to drop. And that's, again, specifically because of the fact that we're hitting power limit. I'm gonna try 200 and see if this crashes. Nope, but we're sitting at 2085. Now you know what we gotta do now. Oh, it just crashed. So we gotta pull the, the clock back just a little bit, and we need to now run some fire strike and see if we can't get on the leaderboard. So when I did the original benchmark you guys saw in the review where I put the XC up there as well, our score was a 13,956. That was the graphics score and that was running on the driver 411.51, which was the media driver. We're currently running 411.63 and uh, like I said, our score is a 13,956. We just got a graphics score of 15,350. 14,828 was our combined score. So if we see where that gets us in Hall of Fame, oh, there we are right there, number 15. Dang, I was hoping to get up there with the Titan V guys, but anyway. Oh look, someone else is out there benchmarking their 2080 Ti as we speak, haha, ha. beat you. So here's Kingpin's score right there with his uh, 2080 Ti. That's okay though, because if we go ahead and move over to Time Spy Extreme, and then we do the two card option, spoiler alert in our next video, who's number one, baby? So that's for our next video. But as you guys can see, the 2080 Ti does overclock. It doesn't have a huge amount of headroom because power is definitely what's limiting. And hopefully once those tensor cores are sitting there doing nothing besides scratching their ass, we can actually see what's gonna happen uh, in the future. 3 d Mark is gonna be updating for a ray tracing benchmark apparently. So there is that. All right guys, thanks for watching. Tell me what you thought of the overclocking ability of these cards. And as always, we will see you in the next one. I did that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready?